Hi again, y'all. It's Susan, and um, I just got through doing a video for a haul that I did. Um, so I thought I would go ahead and uh, somehow figure out where all this stuff is going to go and just chat with y'all for a minute. Um, you know, um, I've met so many wonderful people on YouTube, and um, I have some some pretty good friends that um, that chat with me all the time. You know, on my videos and stuff, and I um, I know they're probably worried. So. Um, this week has been a particular hard week for me uh, because um, I found out last week, um, last week felt like a million years, so I'm not sure if it was Monday or Tuesday, um, but I got a call from my mother, and um, I don't usually get calls from my mother at 7 o'clock in the morning, and um, my, father, my stepfather, um, who has always been my father, I've known him since I was 11 years old, I'm 40 I'm 43 this year. I'll be 44. Um, so he's been my stepfather since I was 11 years old. And um, he's been, you know, more of a father to me than my, my natural father. Um, but uh, anyway, I love my natural father also, don't get me wrong. Um, and he passed away four years ago. Um, I don't know what it is about the age of 60, around 65 or 66. Um, just seems like... Uh, <laughs> That's our number, uh, you know, for people in my family. But um, so, about a month ago, my stepfather uh, was experiencing a lot of pain in his um, in his chest, and he has some heart issues. He's on heart medication, and uh, he um, uh, he ha he has a oxygen mask. He has a pleurisy, I guess that's what it's called. I'm not sure, but he has difficulty breathing. Um, so he's not been in, you know, he hasn't felt very good now for a few, uh, for quite a few years. Um, but he's always spry. So, um, well, he got these chest pains and, uh, he went to the doctor about a month ago and they found a lump or a spot on his lung. And, um, so they did, they did x-rays or whatever that is that they do, MRI or whatever, and they found the spot and they thought it was pneumonia so they started treating him for pneumonia and he's been uh, that was a month ago and then he went the pain was just so unbearable so he had to go back to the doctor or hospital or something and um as they they did another I guess I don't know MRI x-ray whatever those things are that they do um they found that um he has spots now he has new spots um nodules or whatever they refer to them as um on his ribs and on his spine and uh sorry I'm gonna try not to be emotional I've actually had a pretty good last two days I wasn't too bad I didn't cry um I have really haven't stopped crying since I talked to my mom but anyway so long story short um you know apparently it was cancer and uh and apparently in, in uh, you know, four weeks it spread. And now it's uh, what they call a bony metastic or something like that. And it's fast spreading. Okay, we're going to work on this box while we talk here. I'm sorry. I hope I don't make y'all down. Um, but anyway, I thought it might make me feel better to talk about it. And maybe it won't. I don't know. Um, but uh, so... Uh, it's fast spreading, and uh, and I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Um, so I have plans to go home next week. Um, he asked all of the kids to come down next week. I have uh, three stepsisters and my brother, and uh, he's supposed to see the the bad thing was what really got me upset I mean because I was upset enough over that um, what really got me upset was that they waited a month you know he has cancer running through his family and he and you know and the doctors should know that that's a possibility that that could be happening and I know doctors make mistakes so I mean I I'm thank I'm thankful that we have doctors so don't get me wrong I you know I but they missed the whole cancer thing. And um, so when he talked to his doctor, I think it was on, you know, it may have been Wednesday when he called, or when my mom called. Um, 
they said that they couldn't, they were going to do a biopsy immediately, but they had to call my stepdad's heart doctor to make sure that he could, um, you know, be off the medication to do that. And uh, so after they talked to the doctor, um, he said, yeah, that's fine. He can, they, you know, they can take him off the heart medication while they, you know, prepare him for biopsy. But he can't, he can't do any kind of biopsy for seven days because he's on blood thinners. So, um, that really upset me because, because, you know, if it's spread that fast in three, in, in four weeks, I mean, I can't even imagine what another week is going to do. Um, so y'all, if there's anything y'all get for them, from this conversation, um, my, my stepdad felt like he probably had cancer and I, I, I can only assume that he had said something to the doctor and from what I talked to my family that he had, he had said that and the doctor kind of shrugged it off and said oh no it's not cancer um, don't if you feel you know your body and if you feel like something is really 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 wrong and don't you know I'm an advocate for you get a second opinion go to a different doctor and you know my mom told me a month ago that he had a spot on his lung and that they weren't really treating him with the kind of critical um, this that you know that she thought that they should treat him with and that anybody would expect of you know of their loved one um, and, and you know and I, I I told them I said if you don't get the response that you need you need to go to another doctor you know you need to you, there's a lot of doctors out there not all doctors are like that um, I have, you know, generally wonderful doctors, but if you feel like something is wrong, you just keep on them until they check you. I mean, I had they would have treated it like a possible cancer situation a month ago, then he might have only needed radiation on the lung. But now he's off his heart medication. And now it's spread to his bones. And, you know, and um, when I was talking to my mother and my family, it had all sounded pretty much like he had given up. And I was just so distraught. Um, I just can't imagine. You know, he's been the rock of our family for, for years. He saved me and my brother pretty much. I mean... My mother, we, my mother and father got divorced when I was like 10, and my father was kind of uh, not right about the whole divorce, I guess you could say, so he was kind of in and out of our lives, and my mother worked two jobs, so she was always gone, and she was always working hard, and we, me and my brother had babysitters for most of our, you know, uh, you know, from 11, you know, from 10 to... I don't know how many years, I tell you, I probably have mentally blocked it, but, um, but when Roland came in our life, Roland was, you know, he's a good old boy, he's a farmer, um, he has great children, great family, I mean, his family, they're very close, they see each other all the time, so Roland gave us something that we just didn't have at the time, you know, I mean, I have a wonderful family as well on my father's side, but, it was different, you know, because my mom was struggling so much with just trying to keep her children fed and clothed with a roof over their head. Um, but he, he met my mother. They fell in love, and he moved us to the country. We had a nice house. We had property. We had horses and cows. And um, my brother, he was my brother. I love my brother very much, but he was kind of introverted. He was kind of a computer guy. And, uh, sorry y'all, y'all can't see what I'm doing here. I am working on this for my mother-in-law. This is a saw crafter dresser. And I actually did this for the saw crafter challenge, but I went out of town and I didn't get it done and I didn't have it with me, so I couldn't finish it. So I'm finishing it now. But, um, so he, I mean, he, he gave us, sorry, I'm a store jumper. Um, he gave us so much. I mean... You know, a lot of why I, I am who I am is because of him and my mother, you know, my grandmother, my father, my, you know, all of my family members. But, but he was the one that 
really made a difference in David's life, my brother, and my life. My brother was introverted. He stayed in the room all the time. He was a young computer kid, um, didn't have a lot of ex uh, extracurricular anything going on. Um, and my stepdad, um, he would get him out of the house, you know. He would uh, let him drive the tractor, taught him how to drive the tractor, how to... You know, my brother would get up every morning and feed the cows because we have baby cows, so he'd have to feed them with a bottle. I mean, so, like, he gave us, I don't know what you would call it, but I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about. So, anyway, so that is what I'm struggling with this week, and I know that cancer has really probably, every single listener out there probably knows somebody who has had it or is dealing with it now, and um, I just don't even know what to what to think. I mean, had it had just been the lung, I you know, I don't know, the whole, I did a lot, you know, I'm an IT person, so you know what I did, um, my mother sent me the letter from the doctor, and the first thing I did was commence to Googling, and, um, I mean, if you, um, if you know anything about lung cancer and, and bone cancer, once it gets to the bones, it's, um, uh, there's no cure for it. And um, really the only treatment is chemotherapy, and that's just to uh, make the quality of life better, maybe a little longer. But, um, so yeah, I'm a little, I'm a, you know, I'm hurt, I'm very sad, and I'm, I'm a little mad at the doctors, you know, but, you know, I know it's not completely their fault. I mean, I guess, you know. I know that they are busy and stuff. It's really hard to, because I do respect doctors, and I do respect the medical industry. I mean, you know, they do a lot of really good things, and they keep people alive, you know. But it's just some doctors, I think, are just too busy, and, or, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, so that's what I'm kind of struggling with, so. Um, I know I have that mini album that I need to finish, um. Sorry, y'all cannot see it all. I'm trying to get this bead, this uh, pearl trim in there, and I'm not doing too good. It's my glue is not really uh, is not really working too well. Um, so it's not really a rant about doctors at all, but I don't know. Anyway, so all I can do is try to stay as positive as I can, and and hope that they stay positive. I I think. I was so distraught this week because I really felt like he had given up. Um, my stepdad is interesting. If you ever talk to him about his health, he <laughs> he kind of makes a joke out of it, sort of. But um, sort of. But I think that's just his way of dealing with it or talking about it. You know, like he'll say, "Oh yeah, the doctor said there's nothing they can do." And I'm like, "What? What are you talking about? There's nothing they can do." <laughs> you know. So he just kind of plays it off that way, and I really just thought he had given up, but then I talked to my sister, Julie, and she said that, um, you know, that the first few days, they really struggled with it, you know, my mom was very sad, and, um, you know, my stepdad, for obvious reasons, and all he could do was talk to them about, you know, what he wanted them to have when he passed away, and, uh, and that kind of thing, and then she said that, she said, well, Daddy, what are you telling me? Are you are you telling me you won't fight? Sorry. God, I'm so emotional. Um, you telling me you won't fight? You're not going to take any treatment, you know, if they recommend it or whatever? And um, he said, no. Uh, he says, no, I'm going to fight like hell. <laughs> Pardon my French. Uh, but it is something that my stepdad would say. And so I felt better after that. Um, it really, you know, as if... I need to be comforted, you know, it's him that's going through this, so, um, it's kind of selfish of me, but I did feel better after I heard that, at least he's gonna try, you know, and that's all you can do, right, I mean, you can just try to do what you need to do, and hope for the best, and just pray to God that, you know, I don't know what you pray for, honestly, what, what do you pray for, um, I mean, I, I prayed, and I, you know, I, I had selfish prayers, you know, but really, what do you pray for? Do you, you pray for that they won't have pain, um, 
that they won't. Well, you know what I'm saying. I don't want to reiterate it, or I'm sure y'all know what I mean. But I did pray, and I have been praying, and um, I don't know, you know, it's like they say oftentimes that, you know, your prayers are, they're probably always answered. It just may not be exactly the answer that you were looking for, but they were answered in one way or another, so I don't know. But anyway, so I hope I didn't get y'all down. I just, I felt like sharing that with y'all because I didn't want y'all to think that I've dropped off the face of the earth or something because sometimes I get a little weird. I mean, when my, when my natural father passed away, I was on Facebook a lot and then I stopped doing Facebook altogether. But I'm not going to stop YouTube or crafting because um, it actually helps. So, <laughs> um, it actually helps me. Um, so I'm going to hang with it. I just might need a little time to, to uh, be regular like I was. And, uh, got to finish that mini album. I know y'all are probably like, what? She started this tutorial and she hasn't even finished it. <laughs> it's a week later. I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I kind of lost steam on it a little bit, but we'll get it done. I just, I'm trying to think now how I want to handle the pages before I start embellishing. So sometimes, that's the one thing about me, is sometimes that it takes me a little time to, uh, you know, figure out all those things exactly. So this is something that I was working on um, before I went to Maryland, and it is a sock crafter's little, little dresser. Um, and she had a challenge on her YouTube, on her uh, Facebook page. It was like for um, DT, uh, if you, you know, you could win. I think she did a drawing or something, I'm not sure, but some type of a DT drawing thing. But, um, um, and I never finished it, so, but it doesn't matter. I love Sock Crafters products, so I don't need to win anything. <laughs> I'm still going to buy it. Um, so what I did here was um, those, some of the napkins that I got in one of my previous hauls. I got them from Joann's. I decoupaged it on the box on all the sides, and um, I embossed the drawers um, with this purple embossing powder. I actually had to kind of mix a couple of different colors to get the exact color of my of my tissue or my napkin rather. And then I just used some of these um, filigree butterflies that I got from Butterbee Scraps and just kind of bent them up and made little handles out of them. And they work really well. They're not they're pretty sturdy. And I, and I painted everything on the box, and the drawers slide in and out real easily, as you can see. I didn't have to wax them or anything, so um, my stepmother, or not my stepmother, but, but my uh, mother-in-law, she's um, she's coming to live with us. Um, she's coming from California, and uh, in Florida, we have an apartment downstairs that's totally separate, so um, it just it just happened to be that, um, that you know, that, that she was going to come live with us. And I think it's wonderful because um, I've always, even though I never met her, I always liked her. <laughs> I just like the stories about her. But she's um, she's a crafter too and all that kind of stuff. So when she was unpacking, she left it. She sold a lot of her stuff that she had or she's going to sell it. So it's still in California. She couldn't transport it here. Um, so she was in her, she was unpacking her stuff yesterday and she had these little trinkets that her granddaughter had made for her. And I don't know if she had anything to put them in. So I was all of a sudden inspired to finish this up and make it for her. Um, but, um, oh, see, see, those drawers work really well. <laughs> um, but that uh, purple fabric right there, there's a funny story behind that. That's my husband's idea. That is Crown Royal. You know, you know the little bag that the Crown Royal comes in? That is the bag. I cut it up and used it on the top. And I did just put some matte medium on top of it. Um, that's how I adhered it, so I hope that works okay. I'm not really sure. We shall see, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to cover the top with these flowers. I wish there was a way you could, uh, I gotta figure out the camera situation. That's one reason why I haven't done the, um, uh, the video, the rest of my tutorial, because at home in Maryland, I had a little way that I could hang the iPad over me, and it worked really well. So, I have to figure something out here. I'm going to have to get a real camera with a tripod or something. So, I'm thinking of using these flowers. And I think I am going to use my Distress Concord Grape. Or Dusty Grape. And, uh, 
and it's got glitter in it. <laughs> and I'm just going to ink up these, these little edges on this flower. Kind of give it a, a different look there. So I hope I didn't get y'all down. I do feel better about it a little, you know, as much as a person can. Um, I'm just glad that he hasn't given up. Because he's the strong, he's one of the strongest people I know in my life. And I just can't even imagine. Alright, so that's what I did. I think it'll look cute. And I gotta pick out some flowers. I think I'm gonna do two of these. These are those Michaels flowers from the dollar uh, fifty or the yeah, I think it's the dollar fifty spot. They are just too cute. I'm sure that I could make them, but I guess sometimes it's nice just to have some ready-made flowers. There we go. Oh, and you know what we should do is I'm going to go ahead and move this because it's drying still, so I can't really do anything with it. And there's a little gap between those pearls, but that's okay because I'm going to um, cover that gap up. I have, um, oh, yeah, I bought these stickles. Where'd they go? Oh, I don't know what I did with them. Well, I had the diamond stickles, so I can use those. And then, um, oh, my paintbrush. Sorry, I am struggling. There we go. I just don't want my paintbrush to get ruined. I try to take care of paintbrushes. My husband was so generous at Christmas, he filled my stocking up completely with paintbrushes. So I made a little mental promise to myself that I would not ruin them. Because I'm just like everybody else. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to... I say, well, I don't want to like link, put y'all in the same boat as me. But <laughs> you're probably not lazy with your paintbrushes. But I am not the best person with my paintbrushes. But, um, but here lately, I have been really trying to take care of them. All right. So, uh, pardon my sniffles. So, uh, yeah, the... The other day, I just didn't know when I was going to go home, and I didn't know when the right time was. Um, my sisters were going home immediately. We're all spread out. My brother's in uh, Virginia. Uh, my sister, Amy, lives in Naples, uh, Florida, and uh, my sister, Angela, lives in Chattanooga, and she's, or Knoxville, rather, maybe. Um, it's Knoxville, sorry. Uh, but she's, you know, got a lot going on in her life, so... Right now, this weekend, um, all uh, Amy, Julie, and Angela are there at the house. And um, I'm scheduled to go the end of next week. I'm going Friday. Um, that's when he asks us all to go. But you know, those girls cannot wait. And I understand that. That's why I, I was so upset because I didn't have plans yet. I didn't know when I was going to go. And um, I, I feel like that was part of my depression I guess you could say was because I, I wanted to go immediately too but I didn't know if I should you know I I didn't want to overwhelm him and he wasn't ready like you know he wasn't ready yet he um he couldn't really talk to anybody on the phone about it um so I was I was waiting and then my mom said well he wants everybody here next weekend to talk about it and all that boy that is really pretty that really turned out lovely I don't know if I can get it up there without getting stickles all over the place. Look how pretty that is. Beautiful. Love that. Um, so after I heard that he was going to fight and uh, and I had plans, I already have an airline ticket, a car rented, and all of that. Because, um, you know, my parents live in Memphis. I felt a little better. You know, it wasn't like crying every minute of the day because <laughs> uh, you feel so helpless and, and you just don't understand why why you know why they didn't catch it sorry I had to pick up something real quick um, you know why they couldn't catch it before it spread but you know as much as you feel that that's exactly the way it happened, it might it might not be the case at all because he could have had it in other areas. Um, his father died of pancreatic cancer, 
And I'm pretty sure they didn't even look at the pancreas yet. I could be wrong, though. I don't know. But that's what he thought he had. He said he had the same symptoms that his father had when he passed away. So that's why he felt like he had it already. Um, these are cute. These little white leaves, but they're kind of really too white. But, you know what? We can fix that. Let's see here. Um, I need some paper. Ew, you know what? I just had a thought. I have never, I've never embossed leaves before. I don't know if that'll work or not. You know, I would imagine that the fabric would probably, yeah, that probably won't work. It'll probably melt, right? Yeah, that's probably silly. Um, oh, I have these. These will look good on there. The white flowers. They'll be real white looking, huh? Um, I got these butterflies. Under doesn't really match though, does it? So I don't know how long that's gonna record. <laughs> and I really hope I don't bum y'all out. And it's totally not my goal. That's the last thing I want to do is bum y'all out. We all have our own little struggles and battles that we deal with on a daily basis. We hardly need someone to pile their own issues on top of us, but um, yeah, I'm thinking this little birdie right here, look how cute that little bird is, yep, cute, so, I just wanted to tell y'all so y'all would know why I was kind of quiet, if I am, might make me craft even more, you never know, I love these flowers too. These are those Prima flowers. I wonder. Yeah, you know what? I think we will use it. I think that'll look okay. I painted the box white. But I think... And since they're, oh, no, that looks good. Okay, that looks good. Oh, let's see. Y'all, I have so much stuff. This is just my little thing that I brought from Maryland. But I have, like stuff everywhere so I'm like looking in the least maybe like in places that has the least amount of stuff and I love these little sequin flowers so I might do something with that and I was looking for you know what we're gonna try I'm gonna grab my uh, my little uh, heat gun I wonder this is how you'll know if you'll burn something out. <laughs> Once you catch on fire. Did it already melt? All I'm doing is I'm just seeing if this will melt. It, it, it didn't, it's hard to believe, but it really didn't melt all the way. Y'all are going to think I'm crazy, but I'm going to try it. What's the worst that can happen? Um, it can burn me. <laughs> so don't try this at home. Um, let's see what do I have for embossing powders. I have this, ooh, rust, which I think would be interesting. Oh, I have this. No, this has got to be it. This topiary. Let's see how that works out. Alright, and I've got my, my perfect medium. Y'all, this may not work at all, so just bear with me. At least we'll know it. <laughs> um, I have to thank a Velocity Vet for this. She's the one that I watched emboss, and she just embossed everything like crazy. So now I have like no fear with embossing, which is awesome. I'm not sure she would try this, though. <laughs> All right. Oops. That was kind of a lot. <laughs> All right. 
it'll be interesting to say the least if it works. So that's what it looks like after I shake all that off. Oops, some got on my desk. If you've ever noticed, my desk is super messy. I don't even have a, like a cutting mat. It's like I bought these two tables at, uh, from Walmart. Um, they're this. I think they're the six foot folding tables, and I have two of them. And I just muck them up, <laughs> and I have no worries. There is paint. There is glue. I mean, it's it's just covered. But I can tell you that is the best craft investment I ever made. Because if I had a nice craft table, I'd be worried about it all the time. So, I don't have to worry about that. Alright, y'all. Here goes nothing. I need something to hold it still. Because it's going to most certainly fly away, I'm sure. Alright, we'll just use this little... This little, uh... Quilting. And I'm just going to do it. Well... I don't know. It's not really mountain. I mean, the embossing powder is, but... Huh. I wonder if you'll be able to even tell that I embossed it. It's a little curly now, but it's not bad. Let's see. Let's let it dry. Let's see what we get. And this is that distressed embossing powder. Uh-oh. Y'all, I gotta go catch that. My dogs are barking. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I have to keep the dogs from barking here because we have neighbors that are close by, so. And it's early in the morning. I don't know, I think it's like 8.30, maybe 9 a.m. It's coffee time. All right, so this little leaf we embossed, it seemed to take it. It's not as texturized as I was hoping, but it's green. <laughs> So, I mean, it has a little bit of texture, and it didn't melt, so hey, we're going to do the other one. <laughs> you never know until you try, right? Um, and that'll be a nice complement to the uh, purple, I think. So, oh, so the day I found out about my stepfather, um, that's when Popcorn, I had to take her to the vet, because uh, she got, she had an eye injury, so she's been in the cone of silence all week, and I had to give her eye drops um, every three hours um, in two different sets. So, like, there was one eye drop that I had to do every three hours, and then there was one eye drop that I had to give her in the morning and in the evening. And you talk about a lot of work. <laughs> I had a schedule, I, I wrote down the schedule, and um, I had to wake up at because I go to bed early. I'm, I'm, I'm an early to bed person. Um, so I had to wake up at 10 or 1030. And then, oh, this one didn't cover very well, but we can cover it again if we need to. Um, and then I had to wake up at 130. And then when my husband got up at five, the eye drop said every three to four hours. The vet said every three hours, but the eye drop said every, every three to four hours. So during the day, she was getting it every three hours, and then at the night, at nighttime, I would wake up at 1.30, give her high, her eye drops, and then when Greg would wake up, he'd give them to her. And he gets up between 4.30 and 5 every morning, so. Anyway, so, she was away at the vet, so I didn't have my, I didn't have my husband here, he was working, I didn't have my dogs. I mean, it was, it was a, <laughs> it was a rough day for me. And I'm not laughing because it's funny, I'm just laughing because... I mean, wow, you know, what a day. I mean, but see, that's so selfish of me, isn't it? Because I'm not the one that, you know, it's like my husband said. My husband said, you know, he said, he said, I'm not afraid of dying. He says, I've had a good life. And, and I, and I, you know, if, if it came to be that something happened to me, you know, I would, you know, he would be okay with it. I guess not okay as in he he doesn't love life. He loves life. But he's just saying that he's had a full life and, you know, he believes in Christ and, you know, and all of that stuff. So he feels like, he says, I, he says, I only worry about the people that I love. That would be the only thing that I worry about. But anyway, so... Long story short, so I know I'm pretty selfish, right? That's... You know, shame on me, but I can't help it. Well, that was probably going to be pretty dark, but you know what? I just, there's some areas that are not covering. 
I didn't get enough of that stuff on there, enough of that glue. Um, and I still didn't get enough on there. I should have put it back in that glue. Um, so, but anyway, so popcorn is fine, y'all. Um, I did the regimen like I was supposed to do. I took her yesterday morning, Saturday morning, and the vet did some stain in her eye. And her little wound is gone for the most part. So, she's doing, I got to take off the cone of silence yesterday. And now I just have to put like this neosporin, neosporin stuff in her eye. Um, just, uh, you know, three times a day. So, it's not that bad. Um, it was so funny because um, there, there's a female vet... And then there's a um, an, an assistant, I guess he is. I don't know what his title is. He's very knowledgeable, so he seems like a vet to me, but I don't know if he is an actual vet. So he's the one that checked me out when I picked popcorn up, and he's the one that said, you have to do it every three hours. It's important, you know? So I was like, okay, I will do it, I promise. So I did it, right? I did what needed to be done. And then... I take I take her in on Saturday, and the the female vet, um, the the actual vet, the she owns the vet facility. She's like, well, I usually tell them they don't have to worry about the evening. And she just looked at him. <laughs> I was like, that's okay, that's okay. I would have done it any. I mean, like I I would just did what I needed to do, and and it was good because her eye is much better now, and. Uh, no, no long-term injuries there. That's the thing about Shih Tzu's, y'all. Y'all, if you don't have a Shih Tzu, but have been thinking about getting one.